Hey everybody, we got some uh, new vocab and stuff to talk about today. It's section 2.3, evaluating functions, increasing and decreasing. So we've got a bunch of notes up here that we need to kind of go through first. Um, X being the independent variable, Y is the dependent variable, and that's because we have all of our functions written kind of in this format. What you need to know starting now is that we have this F of X business. You can see it down here and we have g of x business, that just kind of determines, um, we have two different equations, and the fact that it's written in this f of x notation, or g of x notation, you could also see h of x, k of x, um, it just means that they're different formulas, and they're all functions. That's what the f is for, is function. So this means that y is a function of x, and it depends on what x is. And so you read it f of x, not f times x. That's different. It is a function depending on x. So whatever x is changes your y value, and the y we're writing is f of x. So f is the name of the function, and in this case, this is the g function because it's g of x, and there could be different letters too. And x being the independent variable. And then um, just keep in mind here, if you're asked to rewrite an equation and put it into function notation, that means get y by itself. And we'll talk about that when we get to it. So a lot of new vocabulary, kind of strange stuff going on. And we have these weird formulas up here that have this f of x and g of x business. So first of all, f is this equation, g is this equation. They're two different equations, which is why they have two different letters. And um, the reason why it's written f of x instead of y is just because it's telling you that this formula for y actually is a function. And the same thing here. This is another different kind of y, um, but it's telling you that it is a function. And now that we know what functions are, we know that they're kind of special formulas and stuff. So problem number one, these are just evaluate problems. These are actually pretty simple. So can you first of all determine what problem number one is asking you about? Is it asking you about this equation or this one? Okay, this is an F, so we're going to use the F equation, okay? So all I have to do here is I have to take this 3, and what I'm doing is plugging it in wherever you see the X. It's kind of like doing a T-chart in a way. So we're doing 2 times 3 minus 4. So the F of X is like a formula, and all it's asking you to do is plug in 3. So the common mistake here is that a lot of people think that means take the equation and times it by 3. That is not what we're doing here. We are actually plugging in, which is really important. So 2 times 3 is 6 minus 4 equals 2. So that means that at whenever x equals 3, the y value of the formula is 2. The same thing here. This one um, is asking about the g equation, which is this one. But you're doing the same thing. You're taking the 3 and you're plugging it in anywhere you see an x. So pretty simple, as long as you understand what the notation means. That's the new thing. So be really careful with your negatives here, and we're squaring some stuff, so just kind of be careful. It is kind of doing like a, um, a T-chart. Now this is supposed to be a 3 in here, and then minus 10. So be careful. We are doing exponents first. So this is 9 times the negative 2 is negative 18. Always do the exponents first before you multiply and then plus 18 and then minus 10. 18's cancel and we end up with an answer of negative 10. It's just evaluating. It's when you plug in this number, what number do you get? Same thing with the negative 4. I'm gonna plug in the negative 4 here. And of course we are again square the number first which gives you positive 16 and then multiply it by negative 2 which gives you negative 32. And then positive 6 times negative 4 is negative 24, minus 10. And I believe adding all those negative numbers together gives you negative 66. There's our answer for that one. Okay, so it gets a little bit harder. If you can understand number 1, 2, and 3, then I can essentially give you any number, any letter, any combination or binomial or trinomial to plug in for x if you understand that notation and what each question is asking you to do, all you're doing is plugging in whatever's in the parentheses for the x. So in this case, instead of writing x, I'm writing a. So just like I did originally with my number of 2, in this case it's not a 2, it's a letter a, but I'm still just plugging in a for x. And there's nothing I can do there except write 2a minus 4. That's it. You are just taking whatever number or letter they give you and plugging it in for x. That's what you're doing every single time. 
We're going to do the same thing with g of y minus 3. This one's a little bit different, but not really. It's just a binomial that you're plugging in for x and squaring it, and then plugging it in for x right here. So again, what this is going to look like is negative 2 times y minus 3 squared plus 6 times y minus 3 minus 10. I am taking all of this stuff, the y minus 3, and plugging it in for this x and for this x. Just like I plugged in a number, this time it's a binomial. But that's all I'm doing. So I just have to clean it up a little bit. I can definitely combine like terms. Maybe I'll zoom in a little bit for this one. So we're going to do negative 2. Make sure you FOIL first because you do the exponent first before you multiply. And then I'll distribute the negative 2 in on the next round, plus 6y minus 18 minus 10. Now I just have to distribute my negative 2 in. Be careful with the negative. Makes negative 2y squared plus 12y minus 18 plus 6y minus 18 minus 10. Now I just have to combine all my like terms and we're finished. So negative 2y squared, when I combine my y terms, I have 18y. And I combine my whole numbers, that's negative 36, negative 46. Okay, you do not have to factor, you don't have to take out any GCFs, it's just plugging in y minus 3 and then simplifying, just combine your like terms. Okay, it's getting a little bit messy, but we are going to do the same exact thing with this g of 3x plus 1, which is going to be weird. Again, I'm focusing on the g equation, so that's this one. Um, and what I'm going to do is take this 3x plus 1, and I am going to plug it in right there, and right there. You're always plugging in. That's what this new notation means. That's kind of the goal of today, is to figure out how we can actually solve and simplify these things. Okay, so last one, negative 2 times 3x plus 1 squared plus 6 times 3x plus 1 minus 10. Again, I'm going to do the exponent first, which means FOIL, and then I will distribute in the negative 2. 9x squared plus 6x plus 1. Distribute my 6 into the second binomial. And I just have a little bit of combining and distributing to do. Okay, so I only have one x squared term, so negative 18 x squared. I'm going to combine my x terms. I have negative 12 x and a positive 18 x, which makes positive 6 x. And I combine my whole numbers, negative 2, positive 6, negative 10. Negative 2 and positive 6 is 4, minus 10 is negative 6. And again, you don't have to factor, you don't have to do any GCF, you're just combining like terms, and once you do that, you are finished. Okay, so there was some practice with plugging some stuff in. Okay, and then this, sec this last part up here that we talked about, if asked to rewrite the equation in function notation, then solve for y. And in this case, it already is solved for y, so that's good. What I'm going to do for this one, and then follow the directions completely, because then it asked me to do something else, is that remember that the y is just an equation, and the fact that this is a function, because it's just a y equals mx plus b type of equation, that means that it's definitely a function, if you can picture that in your heads and think about the vertical line test. I'm just going to change the y into f of x to let everybody know that's looking at this equation that this is a function. And so basically what I'll kind of refer to from now on is that this f of x is just a fancy way of writing y, and it means that whatever y is, is that it is a function. Okay, so there's in function notation, and then all I have to do is it's asking me to find f of 5. So remember, that doesn't mean you're multiplying by 5. That means that you're actually plugging in 5 for x. So plugging in your 5 goes here. You're taking the x and replacing it with 5. So that actually gives you 15 minus 4, which is 11. Okay, same thing for number 8, although notice that y is not by itself, and that's what we need to do first, is to get y by itself. So I'm going to move over the 6x, which makes it negative when I move it over. Divide everything by negative 3. Divide by negative 3. Divide by negative 3. That means that y equals positive 2x minus 4. And then again, this is just a fancy way of saying function, because I know that this linear equation here, y equals mx plus b, I know that that is a function. So I'm going to change my y into f of x, just a fancier way of writing y. And then I'm going to copy my exact equation. And then what was it asking me to plug in again? 5. 
Okay, so I'm going to do f of 5. It means I plug in 5 for x. I mean, look at it. There's an x here, and I swapped it out with a 5. It's the same thing. That means that anywhere there's an x, you replace it with a 5. That gives me 10 minus 4, which is 6. Okay, so pretty simple math to do as long as you understand what this notation is asking. Okay, we're going to do one of these increasing, decreasing problems, and then we'll do the other two in class just to make sure everybody gets it. But <clears throat> what these are is that you're given an actual picture of a graph like this parabola down here, and you have to tell me where is the parabola increasing, where is it decreasing, where does it remain constant, and then figure out the domain and the range. And we can probably do the domain and range first, um, but it's a little bit tricky <clears throat> because um, it's given a graph. Okay, so what I have to do first is figure out this parabola. I'm looking at it in terms of x and y. And what you should know about parabolas is that these arrows mean that it keeps going to the left forever. It gets wider and wider and wider. And it also goes to the right forever. It gets wider and wider and wider and wider. Yes, it goes up really fast, but it's also going to the left and to the right forever. And it's not going to stop. So eventually it will be very, very, very wide as well as very tall. So our domain for parabolas is negative infinity to infinity. And the reason for that is because it gets wider and wider forever. It never stops. It never stops going left and it never stops going right. Okay? And then as far as the range goes, what we have to figure out is, again, we're looking at these arrows. And yeah, this arrow is going up forever and this arrow is going up forever. But does it go down forever, too? You, answer, you should be answering no. No, this parabola does not go down forever. What is the lowest point on this parabola that you see? And make sure that you give me the y value, because domain or range is always talking about y values, right? So what is the lowest y value for this parabola? So the lowest point is right here, and all you're telling me is what is that y value? Don't give me the x value, the y value. The y value here is negative 4. So that means that my parabola actually starts at negative 4, and it goes up forever. And so up forever indicates positive infinity. Okay, why did I put a bracket on the negative 4? That's just because there's an actual point there on negative 4. I wouldn't use a parenthesis unless there was an open circle. That's when I would use a parenthesis on that graph, but you don't really have to worry about that. That's just in case you were wondering why I put a bracket there. It's because there's a, there is an actual point there. Okay, now let's talk about increasing, decreasing, and then I'll answer all your questions and stuff tomorrow. Um, as far as where this graph is increasing, what you're thinking about for increasing and decreasing is reading it from left to right. And so first of all, the increasing and decreasing and constant and all this stuff is always just the x values that you're looking at. That's important and something that a lot of people kind of mess up is whenever you're doing increasing, decreasing, constant, that's asking you for what x values is the graph going up, for what x values is the graph going down. And so increasing, what I'm going to kind of look at here is, let's, let's think about it in terms of a roller coaster. And the roller coaster always starts on the left and goes to the right. So here's where my roller coaster starts, actually. And it, would you agree that until we get to the bottom of this parabola, the roller coaster is decreasing, it's going down. And then once we hit the bottom of the roller coaster, what do we do? We start going up right? So here is where my increasing section of the parabola is. This is where the roller coaster is going up in the air. And up means increasing. So what are the x values where the roller coaster goes up? Well, the x value starts going up at 2, and then it goes up forever. So that is this part of the number line, not number line, parabola, is where my graph is increasing. Okay, and it's just asking you for the x values. Increasing, decreasing constant is not asking for y values, which is why it gets a little bit confusing. Okay, so in the same way, let's talk about where the roller coaster is decreasing. That means where is it going down? So you can kind of picture the roller coaster traveling along this curve, and it's going down here. And where does it start going down? Well, this arrow indicates that it started way up in the sky, actually. That would be negative infinity. And it's negative infinity because all these x values over here are negative. So don't be thinking about the y values. Remember, it's x values that you're talking about for decreasing. So it's decreasing from the left forever until it gets to the x value of 2. That is where it is decreasing. And so the way that I write that is negative infinity 
because it's coming from the left forever. Think about left being negative numbers on the x-axis. And then it stops decreasing at 2. Okay, and then a question of where is this graph constant? In this graph, there is no constant area because it's either decreasing, and then once it hits that bottom point, it starts immediately increasing. But an example of having a constant section would be on this graph. See how this part right here is not increasing or decreasing? It's completely flat. That's an example of a constant section, and we'll talk more about that tomorrow in class. So for this parabola, there is none. There is no area where it is just completely flat. All right, and now we have our last kind of section for this part. Is this asking us to find f of 4? This means when x equals 4, what is y? Okay, so what we have to do is look up, because remember how it's like f of x? Well, what they did is they replaced x with 4, so that's why it's asking you where is x equal to 4, what's the y value? So on this graph up here, find the point where x equals 4. Well, here's x equals 4 on the axis, and that point happens to be y equals 0. Do you agree with that? It's like kind of filling in an ordered pair, Net, or 4 comma what? In this case, 4 comma 0. And we'll do another one. When x equals 2, where's that on the graph? When x equals 2, here's the x value of 2. Where is the graph located? Way down here at negative 4. So go to the x value of 2 and figure out where that 2 is on the graph. And here it is at negative 4. So kind of confusing, you guys. This is a tough topic. This is all brand new stuff, functions, all this weird notation stuff. Um, thank you for paying close attention and taking good notes. And we will continue this discussion tomorrow in class.